Sunday at 5 Eastern Time. The War, Monday at 9 Eastern Time. And if you're tough enough, the Brawl and the War, Tuesday at midnight Eastern Time. It's the heaviest return engagement since World War II. Hello, listening crowd. Which? Darren and Brett. Good to do. I want to give a big motherfucking shout out to Lulu Pencil and the Pencil Army and the Coco Pro motherfuckers. And also, it's May, three-year anniversary, motherfuckers, so we're celebrating. It's MDK all motherfucking day. Free my boy 2-6. Press play. There's the magic finger. Pressing down. Yeah. The Wrestling Club with Darren and Brett. We've got a show that you'll never forget. Forget, forget. Greetings, Scrapple fans, and welcome to WFMU's Wrestling Club, the only space that's safe for all wrestling fans, whether you're casual, lapsed, obsessed, or ashamed. I'm Darren Maybe, broadcasting from the Beginley Square section of Jersey City, New Jersey, where tonight, Wrestling Club is going to be talking ex pretty much exclusively Japanese pro wrestling. If you want to join on the YouTube on the uh, YouTube uh, live link or the stream or whatever, or you can call the hotline at 732-200-CLUB. We're going to be talking Joshi. We're going to be talking New Japan and that and so much more. But first, let me introduce you to my tag team partner coming to us via satellite from Hollywood, California. The Sodom to my Gamora. Brett Davis. Brett. Oh wow, that's a that's a deep cut right there. That's uh, right. Yeah, yeah, we will be talking hustle today. Uh, that is that one of is the a... hustle tag teams. That's right. Do you know? Uh, do you know who were the who, who, who comprised that uh, lovely uh, duo? I believe it was Mark Jindrak and Shano Hair. I don't know. Uh, he was the semi-main event for Slammiversary 2009 against Sting, where he tried to uh, join the main event mafia. You know him as the blueprint, Matt Morgan. There but we the go. fans in Hustle knew him as Gamora. <laughs> well, uh, first, I, I want to address the cold open. Shout out uh, to the Murder, Death, Kill gang. Shout out to the Hate Club. Shout out to all my boys locked down on the Eastern Block. This morning I had a we're working Eureka on it. You're moment. working on it. We were, uh, I, I was trying to set up something for this week. It will uh, sadly have to wait for next week, but it uh, involved talking to a lot of people in Japan. And I decided to send um, a Jushu wrestler, May Suruga, uh, a, 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 a nice message from Nick F. Engage, uh, congratulating her. On a uh, wonderful three-year anniversary, uh, and that that went out this morning. And uh, I think they're going to be friends. I I think so too. I don't think Nick Gage is going to be able to get through Japanese immigration, but May could come here, and uh, you know they could go to uh, you know down to Camden or wherever uh, you know go to Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> you know they go to Top of the Bell. It'd be a lot of fun. Darren, I think you're underestimating the will of Nick Gage. That I would never do such a thing. I, I think he's going to like disappear off the map for maybe a week, and then he'll be showing up at Chocolate Square with his light tubes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, well, today we're not talking about Nick Gage, although thank you, Nick, for shouting out Ch Coco Pro. Um but uh, uh, we are uh, doing yet another Weird in Japan episode. And now, I guess, de facto Japanese correspondent on the show, uh, we are welcoming back very special guest, two-timer, which means she gets the blazer, Emily Pratt. Welcome back to Wrestling Club. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I'm glad to be back. Looking forward to getting my blazer in the mail. Mm -hmm. It's in nice. Season. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's inscribed. Make sure to check out the inside. Um, yeah. But uh, thank you for being here. 
I, I said de facto Japanese course, but we could make it official. We could give you a nickname like Dr. Puto or something. No, oh, I don't. The, the, I can't deal with the responsibility, <laughs> so I'll go with de facto. <laughs> a roving uh, yeah, correspondent. Like, Rove, okay, ro- I can deal with roving. Yeah, you're our Lee Marshall. <laughs> Although, <laughs> you're not really roving anywhere. Ro- roving implies that she's the one on the move. Oh. Well. I, yeah, I'm at the same desk that I was the first time. Well, it's very, I'm sure it's a very movie. nice desk. It is, actually. It's, a pretty, it's very sturdy. I also got it for free. When I moved into this apartment, so that's what I'm. Ta- I'm sleeping in a used <laughs> bed. I got a yeah. used bed over there. It came with the it came with the room. That's my nice. kind of sleeping arrangement. Nice. Well, uh, we're talking in Japan. Is there any American wrestling news worth mentioning up top? You know, Tom Phillips well, was released today. I uh, yeah. Adnan, we it's, lost Adnan. Nice. We lost Tom. We got Jimmy. I think that about sums it up. Yeah. I don't know, Jimmy. The MMA guys worry me. Oh, you're not a fan of Bellator? No. Yeah. Not, not so much. Yeah. I only like it when it's like, you know, I, I, I feel I, like I, think, I only like MMA. I think by the it's... end of this episode, sorry, by the end of this episode, you will, <laughs> if someone doesn't know me, they will make their own conclusion whether or not I'm a fan of Bellator <laughs> with the things that I kind of glom onto. You as never, but you know, but that could go. Though. That might be a twist. I mean, Brett and I could start rolling later in the show. <laughs> is that a thing that they do? They roll, right? I I, I would have to sort of That's take tough. something that I would not. That says tough on. like rolling. All right. I don't even know what that is. Uh, Emily, any thoughts on American wrestling? You um, excited about? It's uh, weird they got rid of Tom Phillips. He was good. He was good. Know. Yeah. yeah. This decision. He was just like normal. I, I normal, stand by this. Nice guy. <laughs> I wish they had a tiny bit of foresight and the zombies could have taken Adnan Verk away. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That, this was a real missed opportunity. <clears throat> they had that one smiley guy right by the announce table. <laughs> they could have taken Tom too. This like would have been yeah. Like I would have had more respect in hindsight for the zombie angle if they removed people from the universe. <laughs> they did. They removed Vince. They broke his leg. Yeah, but uh, he's, well, he'll be sad. back. That's sad, yeah. I don't think Adnan Verk is coming back, sadly. <sighs> what a shame. Yeah. Well, that's it for wrestling. But, uh... <laughs> for American wrestling. You know, we'll have our we'll have our nine-hour review of the three-and-a-half-hour Raw later in the week, so, uh, you know, stay tuned for that, I guess. Right? Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. But uh, I, I guess it's uh, worth starting off talking about the the big show, the sad uh, show, but also uplifting at times. Um, the Hanukkah tribute show, uh, Matane. Um, you know, I was a, always a big fan of Hanukkah, and you know, it's the saddest story, one of the saddest stories in wrestling history that you know. Uh, things happen the way they happen. But, uh, uh, Emily, what, what did you think of this show? Did you get a chance to see it? Um, I actually did not have a chance to see it except for the main event, uh, which was great. I am, I did pay for it, and I'm going to watch it, but I did not have time. Um, but it was still, like, very emotional while it was happening. But... Mm. Um, yeah, like, it looks like it was an amazing indie show, as well as, like, celebration of life. It was amazing that Kagetsu and Hazuki came back, and, like, um, yeah, it was really incredible, like, who all they got to be on this event, and, like, the main event was just would have been great on like any show. Yeah. And, oh yeah, it was just really I'm glad they were able to do it. It sucks that uh Bushiro didn't let them use footage, it looks like, which mm-hmm. is a real dick move, but they've been like disgusting through this whole 
entire aftermath of her death. So it was not surprising, but it was just like, uh, but yeah. What uh, have they done? I mean, they're... Well, I know I have a question about like what has, how has Bushy Road been handling it? Like, well, what are the the shortfalls been for them in handling? Oh, well, it? uh, mostly like not so. Um, Hannah's uh, mother Kyoko Kimura uh, tried to have kind of an investigation. death there's like a lot of uh information out there about the like pretty in in-depth stuff in interesting like, not uh only like wrestling people but like this is really big because the how the reality show she was on was really popular right right and yeah there was a big investigation into that uh production and i think that tv channel and the deal with with stardom and bushy road they were not really cooperative with um hannah's mother who had also worked with them in the past including like i mean they didn't send i mean they had a show at the same time as the memorial show but they didn't really um, cooperate in like kind of selling memorial merch or allowing any of Hannah's likenesses that they owned to be used for any. Oh my God, that's <laughs> awful. <laughs> so a lot of there's stuff like that. There's some other details, but just generally not um, not cooperating with Hannah's mother in a way that was right. Or just not cooperating in just celebrating Hana and cutting the red tape. I see. I see what you mean. Yeah, they like they did have done some. They didn't do like a memorial show to her. They did like a memorial kind of main event for her, and they. It's not like they've totally like not mentioned her on their shows um, of course and like the same night as the memorial show they uh had somebody using like one of her moves in the main event and it was kind of like a re in a way that was like respectful <laughs> like a uh, reference to that that was hanging out it's not like they're being completely terrible but they could have been a lot <laughs> uh yeah like it really like supportive cutting the red tape, like hey you guys could have helped out sure more. i mean it's funny I mean, they, like, Bushy she was road really stardom on that reality show too so right. it was like yeah Bushy road really wants to be uh like another large wrestling company so it makes a lot of sense from you know yeah that they would yeah. be difficult with something that should be so simple yeah, yeah I mean, AEW, uh, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, AEW, from now forward, especially when it's like a tragic death like this, you know, anything less than, like, what they did should be, like, frowned upon. Because, you know, it's like you're on that roster, you know, it's like your family. You owe it to your talent, to your fan base to, like, really... Just go above and beyond well, and like. Well, I, I'll say this. I, I think it depends on the wishes of the family. If well, WWE sure. wanted to go out and have like a we're celebrating Owen Hart thing right now, <clears throat> it would be bad, in my opinion, right? Because Martha would want nothing to do with it. But if Bushi Road is making it different, difficult for, you know, Hana's family and her friends, there's just no excuse. And you're right. AEW really set the standard which is just a shame that there has to be a standard for these kind of shows. But, you know, that's the Brody Lee tribute was a show of all shows. It was so amazing. And I haven't watched the Hana show yet. I'm kind of dreading it because I, I did see the video of everyone saying, um, oh, what Matan, what, how do you say it? Sorry. I'm forgetting. Oh, uh, it's the Mont name of the Montane, show. Which is like, Montane, which is, right. It's why, but it's kind of like, see you later. Right, Why? right. Just like, it's like, right. Oh, very. But I saw that video and like, 
I'm a crier. And, oh, just breaks me. It's too sad. That's like, in Brody Lee's death was so sad. I don't want to compare deaths, but somebody that's just so, to lose someone so young to suicide is just, it's just awful. And I'm so happy that they got to have this show. And I hope that, that I mean, it seems like that's probably about the only good thing that's going to come out of such a senseless tragedy. Well, that's, that's not entirely true. I mean, uh, this has inspired some changes in the law uh, in Japan, I think. Um, maybe you know more about this, Emily, but like, uh, yeah, like this this specific incident has kind of changed the way cyberbullying is like treated uh, as far as like, you know, crime. And, it was, and, and it was an international news story. And it's just a shame that you know, her memory is going to be forever tied to her demise. And I, it's just, that's, I, I don't know. I mean, it's good that they changed the cyberbullying laws, but, you know, deal with the cyberbullies some other way, you know. It's well, just, yeah. It's a silver line. I mean, you're doing the best you can, but uh, the show looked amazing. I'm going to watch it when I'm emotionally available for it. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, it's, it's such a shame because... You know, we talk about like Maki Ito and all these, you know, Joshi stars that kind of have are brimming with charisma. And I don't think anybody compared to Hana. Like, she was cool in a way that a lot of Joshi wrestlers aren't cool. She was like right. modern, stylish, uh, a good wrestler. Yeah. Second generation. You know, it's like so much charisma. It could have very easily worked in America. Um, a lot of, you know, the wrestlers in America now. Uh, that was that was cool to see in the Matane video, just like everybody from everywhere, from, you know, Kenny Omega to Io Shirai uh, paying tribute. So it was nice to see. Um, and, uh, yeah, Venny uh, is somebody we wanted to talk about today. Uh, she's been paying tribute to Hana by wearing, I guess, her robe. Um, uh and she's, uh, you know, one of she was one of Hana's closest friends, I guess, uh, in Joshi, if, that, if, if that's correct. Yeah, they they were in like a tag team uh, together in Wrestle One, which is where they both got like their starts in wrestling. And yeah, and they were friends and. Uh, yeah, that yes, that is their whole story. I think, yeah, they were really close friends within wrestling, for sure. And yeah. and uh, Vani, aka Oscar, but Vani just when she's in America because there's another Oscar, obviously. Oh, yeah. Very like, confusing. <laughs> yeah, done like a lot of uh, referencing to um, referencing of Hannah, like she wore her. Kind of their, I think their tag team gear, or it was either using wearing the gear or using the theme song when she showed up in Got to Move like the day after Hana died, which was extremely emotional. And mm. yeah. Yeah. And, you know, she, she was right up there during the tribute. Uh, yeah, she she's uh, cool. Um, she she's the first trans uh, wrestler in Japan trans Joshi, or yeah. jo Joshi, um, which is like cool, especially when we'll see the you know less nuanced uh, takes of of such things for sort of like hustle. Um, uh, but yeah, she's. <laughs> oh, what's the difference? <laughs> I mean, there's just. Oh, yeah. I see. <laughs> But there, there, you know, like she, uh, she was part of the uh, women's eliminator tournament in AEW. Uh, she, she's cool. I, I was also watching a clip of her in Choco Pro, uh, which we'll talk about a little later. Uh, in the small room, just delivering these like horrific, like Sid vicious big boots. <laughs> they were <laughs> insane. Uh, and, and Emily, you, you, you passed along a clip of, uh, uh, Venny in DDT's, like, uh, fluorescent light tube match, which is pretty yeah. cool. 
Yeah. How how would you describe this match? Um, so it's the premise of it is like in a reference slash parody of like death matches where there's all the light tubes around the ring. There is only one light tube in this match, and they the goal it's like you win by like the other person. You lose if you break it immediately. So they're doing all this stuff where they're trying to like pass the light tube. And they do really creative spots around it. And uh, yeah, it is a very good and unique match between Asuka and Akito. Yeah, if Nick, yeah. Yeah, if Nick Gage is uh, concerned at all about career longevity, which I don't think he is. Maybe he could take a, a pointer from this dude. I'm going to say, it was like such if, a. If Nick Gage is in that match, I do not favor him to win. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, I think it, the was, it was just a. Uh, yeah, it's such a unique uh, spin on that. Uh, you know, uh, what what is uh, Vanny Asuka's. Uh, what, what is her home promotion? The Tokyo uh, Joshi? She's a, free, she's a freelancer currently. Mm. But she, she's been all over the place. Um, she was, she did a lot of stuff in DDT for a while. Um, oh no, she's still in DDT. But I just uh, think of her biggest storylines there from like past, from like 2019, I think. And she's in like. She used to be, I think she, oh no, she didn't start in Wrestle 1, she started in Pro Wrestling Wave. And okay. she's also in like all, she's going around like all Joshi promotions pretty much. Uh, that, that's cool to see. DDT is doing a, a big super show coming up um, w with a sister promotion, Tokyo Joshi Pro, and then Pro Wrestling Noah. What can you tell us about this and like who are the people to watch in this in this thing? Oh yeah. So this is um Cyber Fight Festival because uh DDT, Noah and TJPW, and also Gambari, which is like a smaller company, uh are all um owned uh, by the same company and kind of the wrestling division is named Cyber Fight now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they're doing a big super show together on J uh, June 6th. And like the biggest stuff to watch is probably like the top three matches because everybody's having like their world title match on this thing. And um, they have... Uh, it's weirdly, it's like the summer. No, it's been like the year of like old bald people in Noah. And <laughs> some weird corporate synergy where Junakiyama is the champion in DDT and Muto is the champion in Noah. So How old is Muto now? Um, yeah, he's now he's 59. 58. He's 59. No, 58. 58. He turns oh, 59 58. this year. Oh, okay. You know, he has yeah, only 58. Yeah. It's a gimmick where he could put a mask on and de-age himself by thirty years. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, Kaji Muto. But he's not. But I, using but I mean, Noah, he's just I feel like even though, so, sir, you go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is what happens when you do a show on uh, Skype. Yeah, yeah, well, we're all on different coasts, so there's okay. sometimes there could be a bit of a delay. Yeah. Um. Uh -huh. I think I think Mudo looks good. It's funny how Akiyama and Mudo look exactly the same. Yeah. Like if you just look at the the poster and you just kind of glance at it, it's hard to tell who's who. But I think, you know, yeah, Mudo could just put the paint on or whatever and be the great Muda. But you know, I feel like Kenji Mudo, it's like old man Goldberg. Like he still looks like Mudo. It's fine. It works. Yeah. 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 You know? he, yeah. He his wrestling is like real. Ak Akiyama is like in way better shape. He's a lot younger. He's like ten years younger than him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sense. But I don't know. Uh, Muto's like la his last title defense was good. 
Uh, he can still he, move a little bit. Like, yeah. some, like his knees are screwed up, but he still like can do those like snap Mudo moves, you know? Like yeah. I always think he's like, like underrated. No, it's just like, his like knees are wrestling. snapping. <laughs> yeah. Now he, he can't yeah. run, but it's yeah. fine. He's Mudo. He can, he can get by, you know, he's been doing yeah. it for a hundred years. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. He has like muscle memory, how to do a lot of things, I think. But he's um, facing Marufuji. Is Marufuji still yeah. kind of like the ace of Noah? Um, I think, has he ever been the ace of Noah? I don't know. I remember they used to call him the, the genius of pro wrestling Noah. But I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't know if he was the ace because I. I think he might have been one of those like he's he's the ace by default because Noah just had some real bad years there. Not that Marafuji's not like a world class wrestler, and there was a point where he was probably top five in the world. Um, and he's still like he just hits really hard. You know, he wrestles yeah. like he kind of wrestles like old man Misawa a little bit, but not. I don't think he's in danger of internal cap decapitation, you know, like he's not this broken down wrestler, but he wrestles like he just, you know, he hits hard and it's entertaining. So I think they'll have a good match. Yeah. It's, it's going to be weird. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's going to be weird, but it's like, it's kind of that match. And then the other, big title matches on this show kind of have a similar theme where it's like kind of the biggest uh, kind of prestige names, I think in the like company representative names where it's like both the men's champion, Mudo and Akiyama, like they did just come in weirdly at the same time from elsewhere and then win almost at the same time from like kind of similar people but uh, or no and then defended against like similar figures within the companies too which is really weird but they're both like Jun Akiyama is is wrestling Harashima who is like definitely the past his prime ace of DDT so like that's kind of the same deal and then like for TJPW it's Miyu Yamashita versus Yuka Sakazaki, who they don't really have, like, I mean, this company's only existed for, like, eight years, so they don't really have the exact same dynamic, but those are, like, the historical top two, and you could say, like, oh, they should have put this newer person in there, but kind of with the theme, it's, like, this no. is, like, company representing time, so this is kind of... And it, I, it, I'm looking at the card here. It seems like those are the only three singles matches. Everything else is there's a 14 man tag, six woman yeah. tag, <laughs> six man tag, three way tag. So that's I don't, we'll see. I mean, it's an interesting show. We'll see. Yeah, do I see? Uh, is that Yoshi Tatsu's coming back for it? Oh, good. Oh, oh no, it's, uh, oh, no, it's, anyway. Yo, it's, it's Yoshiaki. Yoshi. It's the Yatsu. other one. Oh, that's right. It's Yatsu. Never mind. Yeah. But oh, his he's thing old. is pretty cool because he's like getting he has like a prosthetic leg that oh he's kind of returning after it got amputated. And like the videos oh. of him training are like very impressive. Because also he is old. He he's very old. old. He was Jumbo Shruta's tag team partner. Yeah. And uh, Olympian and stuff. So sorry, I'm doing my jumbo uh think. for the live stream. I'm doing my <laughs> jumbo raise one arm. <laughs> I love that. I did. I do want to talk about the this uh, the top two stars of uh, uh, TJP Yuka Sakazaki, who is the one of the greatest baby faces ever, <laughs> um, the magical girl uh, who's something of a genie, uh, from what I've gathered from watching her. <laughs> is that correct? I like, don't know if she's like a genie, genie, but her pants are definitely like genie. Her outfit definitely like immediately makes you think of I dream of genie I think mm -hmm. but I don't know if she's I think she's just supposed to be magical in general she before this yeah. she was a clown so it was like an evolution from this to from clown to this well <laughs> I want to get it to cloud just a second but I don't want to <laughs> skip over Miyu Yamashita uh, because she's cool she's like Maki Ito's 
tough ass friend uh i guess right yeah that's kind of they've had like a long like rivalry but not really rivalry because ito like sucked so bad that it was like (laughs) you can't even they were so on such different levels but now this year they've been a tag team and they've been really fun and uh yeah but she's like the kind of forever ace of tjpw because she was like they're one of the first trainees that they had and she like has uh she's kind of like the their champion like by default i think like tanahashi and then okada in new japan type of sure status but she's super cool and she uh used to do karate and you can tell she looks like she should she could really like knock you out by kicking you in the head she looks very scary i love her so (laughs) i love being scared i love when wrestlers scare me that's all all i want i want to be scared very intimidating (laughs) well uh i i guess we should talk about this uh i i've been very upset over the whole issue you know sometimes you 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 get a new favorite wrestler and you get so excited about them. And then one thing or another happens and it, it changes everything. Uh, on the last weird in Japan show, I was blissful. I was, uh, unaware. I wouldn't say blissfully because I was much happier once I knew about her. Darren, uh, you, you pointed out who I, you thought would be my new favorite wrestler. I knew, uh, I know you, uh, originally death. Yamasan. uh, who is sort of like if a, a death metal singer were like on Rugrats, <laughs> that's right? About right. Yeah, that's about correct. Uh, and uh, you know she she had like kind of a a cartoonish death metal face paint, and she would go yeah. <laughs> she was like and, a, she was like a harmless juggalo. Yeah, uh, and then uh, she uh, became Gokigan Death. I guess she was in. Correct me if I'm wrong. She was in Tokyo Cyber Squad and then jumped over to Stars, which is just kind of like the rainbow baby face uh, stable uh, in Stardom. Is that correct? Yeah, they're kind of the like most. Yeah, kind of rainbow. I guess kind of rainbow baby. Yeah, Yeah. they're like the (laughs) most. They're like the purest baby face faction, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and she became Gokigan Death, which meant, I think means cheerful death. <laughs> and she changed her sort of like scary outfit into just a clown outfit, um, <laughs> which Emily, you pointed out, is quite scarier than the actual scary yeah, outfit. <laughs> much scarier to me than her Especially original. because she didn't change her gimmick at all. <laughs> she still no. goes, Damn. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But then instead of like sticking your tongue out, she smiles. <laughs> it's all in the details. It's a very nuanced character. Yeah, I I can't. I during every segment we uh, we had a uh, the return. Who, uh, who who was the the woman that kind of controversially returned that uh, had that shoot moment? Oh, uh, oh, the one that. Oh, beat Yoshiko. Up... Yoshiko, yes. Oh, yeah. uh, she came back and everybody's like, you know, in shock, in fear. And then there's Goki and Death, who's also in shock and fear, but still like throwing up the devil horns. <laughs> she's, she's just so, she's just limited in how, like, she only knows, if, you know, I guess one word, it seems. But she's very expressive with the, uh, with her limitations. Yeah. Uh, you know, likes to hang upside down like a bat, all this. Uh, so... Uh, some terrible things happened over the past few months. What um, happened? Well, I, I think we should just uh, jump into the clip and then we'll explain it. Uh, let's take a look at Fukigen Death. Fukigen-sanda. <laughs> Yeah. 
ミジブルは今も好きだよ。余裕だよ。I hate, I hate to see corrupted youth like that. <laughs>、um, oh my goodness, she's smoking now? Why did she s h o u l d have that frown on her face? That's not good. She's talking about well, death. That'll so, lead right to it. The corpse,、uh, formerly Odeo Tai,、um, they defeated stars, and I guess they took Gokigan into their group and just... renamed her Fukigan Death. Which Gokigan death means cheerful death. Fukigan death means grumpy death. <laughs> She is grumpy. She's still trying to smile, but it's, more, it's just coming out as a grimace.、Uh, I don't, well, I think she's, she's just sad. She have you ever gotten like、there. a double, have、kind of like, you ever gotten like a double root canal where you got one on this side, one on this side, so your whole face is numb, but you still try to smile? That's what she looks like. So, yeah, it's kind of like、it. they. It's like a cartoon character. It's, it's like they took someone's dog and then they put like a spiked collar around it. <laughs> <laughs> At first, she's reluctant.、Uh, she's, you know, they put on a, a t shirt. Now her, she's got sad clown makeup on.、Uh-huh. Uh, and a t shirt over the clown costume. So it's kind of like a combination of the last two looks.、Um, uh, Where's she going next? Tsuko- What do you think, Brett? Where do you think she's going next with it? Well, the Tsuko Tora, who seemed like, you know, just treating her like garbage, is now maybe having a bad impression on her. As you said, she's smoking invisible cigarettes. Wow.、Well, uh, you know, I can't see him.、Um, Emily, any thoughts on this devastating turn of events? Oh,、uh, it's inspired that they <laughs> did not have her go back. To death, Yamasan, but it's like, oh no, you're doing basically the same thing, but it's still the clown situation. And now,、uh, is it scarier? <laughs> Which is the scariest iteration now?、Um, I think still Goki and Death is the scariest iteration, I think, because it's like, what is she thinking? She's like unnatural. f u k i g a n death it seems like she's kind of having a good time. She kind of, well, at first, at first she was crying.、Time. She was crying. And I saw that th- there's a painful look on her face. I don't think, I think she's torn between,、yeah. you know, the cheerful g o g i g a n death and then, you know, the traditional death Yamasan. And、yeah. the thing about Gogigan Death, I think you're onto something there as to why it's so off putting because you know, in her mind, something bad is happening, but she can only, she has one gesture she can do and says one word. So、yeah. everything is up for your interpretation. Where Fugigan Death, you know, now it seems like she's starting to express some of that inner turmoil. Yeah. So I yeah. hope it doesn't, yeah. I, maybe, maybe she'll go into a, You know, I don't know where she's going to end up. I mean, I'm intrigued. Well, I mean, I don't know if she, is she sort, of, sort of doing this because when they held her cap, they had her literally on a leash like、yeah. a dog. <laughs>、um, she but, is, you know, now, she's, very now she's like, now she's very comfortable and she's, you know, smoking the cigarettes and she's cheating,、uh, you know, turning on her old allies. Uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep looking at this、uh, very closely.、Um, but respect to Kayori Yonayama, who is the、uh, performer behind all these, who debuted. Darren, do you know when she debuted?、Oh, was it, it was over, it was like、uh, 1997 or something? Yeah, it was like 99, which is yeah, yeah. insane. She looks like. She's 12 years old. Maybe it's the clown makeup and the、it、constant is, and crying. The costume, she's like pretty yeah, normal she's, without the clown makeup. Yeah, she's, dressed、like、a, she's dressed like a children's clown. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Child clown, as they used to say. But we did see a Death Yamasan、uh, one night return on, uh, on the, uh, the, the tribute show. So that was nice to see. A little Tokyo、yeah. Cyber Squad reunion. So, you know, she's. <laughs> It's, it's still in there. You know, she's not completely、uh, gone to the dark side. Although maybe that was more dark side than this. 
I don't know. It's it's, it's hard to say. to say. There's a lot of layers to which a very simple gimmick. Yeah, <laughs> which is why it says death. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, one, one uh, Joshi uh, who you know appeared in the beginning of this, uh, May Suruga. Uh, a few a few months ago, Darren and I we watched the the Lulu pencil May Suruga match. We're obsessed with Lulu Pencil. Absolutely. Uh, I don't think we We're gave part of the Pencil Mace Army. Ruka. Yes, huge Pencil Army, uh, you, me, and Nick. Uh, but, you know, I don't think we gave enough attention to Mace Aruga, who I think is starting to shine a little bit. Um, uh, Emily, are, are you familiar with Mace Aruga? Any thoughts on, on her? Yeah, she's amazing. She's, uh, yeah, she's great. I've been aware of her for like i guess since she debuted basically but uh yeah she's like a prodigy she's really amazing she's doing a good job in tokyo joshi pro also it's one of the tag yeah, she's and... double tag champion it's like two different people which is pretty great uh yeah so let's let's talk about her alter ego may saint yeah. michelle may yeah. saruga is very nice all smiles uh loves apples <laughs> Um, yeah. May St. Michelle is something quite different. How would you describe her? Uh, I mean, her lore is that uh, French aristocrat slash pro wrestler Saki Sama was playing flute in the woods in France and then found, kind of lured out this like maid and <laughs> conscripted her into her wrestling faction. Neo Bishiki Goon and is teaching her about the ways of like beauty, but also how to win the Tokyo Joshi Pro tag titles because all this this faction, every time it's like Saki Sama comes in and she gets a new protege and then they win the tag titles and then they break up and then she gets another one. And so the May is left like the third uh, iteration of that. Something of like a wicked witch almost. Yeah, you she's know, kind she's... of like a witch. Yeah, kind of. But um... a French French aristocrat is like a yes. a, a rarely an oft seen uh, not oft seen uh, wrestling persona. Yeah, the AEW it's... could learn from this and maybe make Team Taz like French aristocrats. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Let's give them like a, a unique unifying Brett, style. Brett, give us like... Brett. Can you give us your best? Taz trying to do a French accent. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> All, right. All right. I I, I support. Yeah. That. yeah. Who who are other uh, Joshi wrestlers that you like right now? Yeah. Who's who coming should, up? Who, who should who, be kept in? Yeah, yeah. As we open up and things start to open up, who are the prospects we should keep our eyes on? Oh man, um, I don't know. There are a lot of good ones. I don't have really interesting takes on this because I don't like. There are a lot of very hyped, like lesser known people, but I haven't like checked them out yet. So I don't even. I can't even give good, really, like uh, hipster take something. But um... <laughs> well, how has Maki Ito <laughs> been received since her excursion? Because. I would assume that would go right to her head. <laughs> oh, um, I think she's been pretty much the same because it kind of fit with her like trajectory. Um, because already they they kind of had a thing where like, not like she's not she is really popular in Japan, but she's like weirdly way more popular than everybody else overseas. Kind of, cause she's like the only person who like does stuff in English out of the whole roster. So it was kind of natural that that would happen. But, um, <clears throat> so it kind of fit like, yeah, she, you know, she's very popular overseas. So she got this opportunity. And then right when she came back, she used it to like get a title shot and she lost, but, uh, it, and it was like, yeah, she wasn't like going to win that. But she might win in the future the title, maybe in like next year, I think. Do you but... think she'll do you think she'll 
come to well i'm sure she'll be back in AEW. AEW, but do you ever see her yeah. maybe moving to the United States to pursue that? Or do you think it's more of a, you know, she's going to be in Japan and America can be just a feather in her cap, so to say, so, so to speak? Um, I don't know. That's like a hard question to ask, to answer, because it's like, I don't, I don't know. Does she want to move? I don't know. Right. Yeah. But, uh, well, she loves Mountain Dew, and <laughs> she does. Yeah. <laughs> she loves Chipotle. Yeah. Yeah. She's cool. And, you know, a few weeks ago on Bryce Remsburg's suggestion, he was like, "Who? Somebody needs to just marry her so she could work here without the you know limitation." I, you know, decided I yeah yeah I would offer to marry Maki Ito, uh, you know, just for the good of wrestling. So that yeah. offer still stands. I'll just yeah. leave yeah, it Brett, out there. Well, Brett, you can't leave, you can't send there the uh, proposal daily. You can't do that. That's not gonna. <laughs> well, how, how do I know it's not getting lost? In... <laughs> okay, we'll in talk the about fan We'll talk about this yeah. off air. <laughs> I'll drive her to whatever fast food she wants. I'll wait in the car outside of Daly's place. Yes. You're very nice. You're very nice. Gentleman. Very nice. Very respectful. Yeah. That's very um, you. Thank you. Uh, let, let's do a hard pivot. All Japan. <laughs> What's going on in All Japan? I have yeah. literally zero idea. Brett, name one All Japan wrestler currently. Can you do one? Uh, Zeus. <laughs> That's one. Yeah, there you go. Jake Lee, <laughs> is that another one, right? Yeah. He's cool. He is cool. I don't really uh, follow All Japan very closely, but I know people are excited about it right now because mm. of Jake Lee uh, winning the Champion Carnival. And he oh, got a new faction. People kind of like have wanted for a couple of years for them to like really like pull the trigger on, on Jake Lee and get him to like be a real top level guy. Even though he was like a really prominent guy for a while. Now but, um, what is, so he what is Jake Lee's heel. deal? Uh, I'm completely he, unfamiliar with him. He's like a cool younger wrestler. You yeah. know, he reminds me. Almost, he kind of reminds me of maybe like even like Ricky Steamboat in that he's got the long hair. He's very good looking. He's a great wrestler. I remember, I think it was a mat. It was either 2020 or 2019. I saw a main event with him and Kenta Miyahara that was incredible. Um, Kenta Miyahara is, is great. And so is, yeah, Jake Lee's great. It's cool that they're going to pull the trigger with him. Uh, it's just any time, you know, it's all Japan. So anytime something cool happens in all Japan, it sucks because it's in all Japan. <laughs> and <laughs> you just never see it. It's never got, it's never really hyped, you know? Um, yeah. I think if he wins, cause he's going to challenge, uh, unless he already did this. In which Suwama? Is um, he the Suwama champion? who's the champion, but he, they like, he got his own faction now, like in March. So it was like, Oh, okay. This is, he has a very right. good new song. Uh, <laughs> One so, thing about yeah. being the most passive observer of All Japan is that uh, if I had to guess, I'd say Suwama is the champion, and I'd be right for 20 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Mackenzie Miyahara was a long-term champion, too. Yes. Uh, yeah, up until was, yeah. Suwama beat him. Um, mm -hmm. And Kenzo Miyahara... I think I did watch that match, yeah. It's, he's cool. He's really good. Um, I'm surprised... No one in the United States has tried to get him. Because, I mean, you have New Japan. You have the New Japan guys. And New Japan guys were coming over here. But I always thought he was one and that was really could really translate as a worker here. Whether it's like, well, I guess Ring of Honor had New Japan. But like Impact or AAA or, where you know, wherever. But because he's not that old. Kenzo Miyaharo, I think, is as young as Okada. Maybe yeah, even younger. Yeah. Young. He's 32, so he's the same yeah. age as Okada. Yeah, yeah. like, the, I remember pre-pandemic, I think people were kind of starting to maybe push for him to get booked internationally on, like, indie shows. 
Right. Um, but that never happened. But I feel like it should happen because he, I mean, he's very good. He could just show up and wrestle and it would make a good impression yeah. for. I mean, he's like a Tanahashi or Okada in my view, where he's just yeah, he's amazing. a fantastic ace wrestler. It just sucks that he's in All Japan. Although All Japan shows are entertaining. I probably watch, I feel like I watch one All Japan show a year and it always has like, it has the oldest undercard. They're all in their 70s. It's like, you'll see, like, I, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say, I think I've seen Abdullah the Butcher wrestle on an All Japan show within the last five years. So like, they'll get all the old guys and then they have like Fujiwara, right? He's on the main roster still. And he's old and weird and great. Uh, but, you know, they just, they don't have the, uh, you know, they didn't, New Japan had its renaissance, its comeback, and All Japan definitely did not. So, but maybe this will be the start of something, I hope, because, you know, I know we're going to probably talk about them too, but, you know, New Japan is in, uh, how shall I say, they're in the toilet. <laughs> Right well, now, yeah, let's talk about it. What's what's going on with New Japan? Everybody's sick. The titles yeah. are flying off people. What's going on? Um, they had a comeback. Well, they had. Uh... Oh man, it's like I don't even know where to start. I just wrote an article about this today, and then I forgot my whole order <laughs> in which I laid out. <laughs> I. <laughs> It's not great, but um, <laughs> I mean, they had their a bunch of shows canceled in May at about the same time. Nine people on the roster got COVID and uh, then they came back with on the 22nd with a house show and then three televised shows from like the 24th to the 26th. And uh, the roster is, like, very depleted by people being sick or, like, recovering from being sick because, like, Okada and Taichi are, like, recovered and they're in storylines and they've, like, showed up to be, like, yes, we are doing <laughs> these things that we were doing before the break still. Uh, and... But they're still, like, getting back in ring shape, pretty much. Uh, and then Osprey got injured independently of this and had to go home. Or he didn't have to go home, but it's, like... It's a weird... I feel like that's such a weird situation. There's a lot to say mm -hmm. about it that people don't know. It's a, I feel yeah, like there's, there's a like, lot of, maybe... like, rumors about his personal life also. But also he's, like, shared stuff about his injury that makes it seem very long term and reasonable for right. him to like go stay with his parents or something Cause he he said like i'm gonna try and come back in 2021 so it's like he's it's but it's like maybe that's not possible to come back in 2021 right, right. but i don't I, I don't know like what's the problem i mean yeah, it's situation is. it's gonna be but. something because i say what you want about will osprey but I do not see him vacating the IWGP title because he, you know, for lack of a better term, lost his smile or something. I know there's been like rumors about that. And yeah, it had to be yeah. physical. He's Why had he... neck issues for a long time. I can imagine. It's, it's like he, uh, like last year, like randomly, he had to not do like two shows in the G1 one time because of neck yeah you're right i remember that yeah i think and people like for a while there was a lot of like oh he can't wrestle like this and do these bumps because of his neck because he was like thinking oh he's gonna like die suddenly or something but it's like he this guy has put a huge amount of damn like wear and tear on his neck over the past like 10 plus years so i think sure. it's like the, the anyway, there's like a bonus stuff being shared around about like why he's doing whatever, but it's like I and for there was like one day where people thought the injury was maybe fake, but like I think the injury is pretty clearly real. So right, right. yeah. And I can understand why you'd want to leave Japan because if he's not wrestling, yeah, then they, he's like yeah. their COVID stuff is so bad in a lot of ways, in the way that it's just, you know. 
you're stuck in an apartment. If you, you know, if you got to come back, you have the quarantine, the mandatory quarantine from the state. So I can see him leaving, but between him, Abushi's hurt, Okada's sick or was Ibushi's sick, he's coming really back. Sick. I thought yeah. he was hurt. I thought he, he was hurt. He, um, I think it confused people because he said that he got hurt, uh, like right after he won the title. And was like working with an injury, but he's like he's like wrestling normally right now. Okay. So he's fine. He well, might be working with an injury still because he does that sure. all the time. But like he's yeah. yeah, he's fine. He's in a feud with Jeff Cobb. It's going pretty well. So that's cool. It's just yeah. <laughs> I, I, I I've said this like I wonder how much money they're offering Kenny Omega <laughs> to come in quarantine for two weeks. Because they are just, they have so few main eventers now, I feel. I don't know. I, I'm i a big New Japan fan, and I have the least amount of interest I've had in New Japan in a decade. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Maybe they'll give the, maybe the, they'll give the title to Goto. Yeah, I, I don't that know. I think cool. they have, like, their main event people. Because they only ever have really, like, four people. <laughs> In right. the world title, what's picture. Naido doing? What, what's uh, Tetsuya Naido doing? Um, he's like having a long. They're kind of like waiting to put him back in, I think, because he had like a big singles match win, and he's like, "Yeah, now I'm starting my comeback." But I his see. his like timeline is saying like he wants to main event the Tokyo Dome in January, so he might win the G1 or something. But right, he's kind right, of in another right. feud right now. But they, the world title match is probably going to be Okada versus Shingo Takagi. Oh, that's so great. Which is pretty great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a great so match. They wait for like, if, and then like Ibushi's definitely in that scene. After that, it's kind of weird because they have other people like Jay White. They could kind of put back in, but they just gave him the Never title. They could try and do stuff with like evil and Sonata also or I feel like kids. after the I feel like after the downturn, I feel like after the downturn in business last year with Evil as champion, that's tough to go back to him. You know, yeah, not even that evil was bad. Like it's just downturn of business due to evil. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Like, yeah. It was I know, they had I know, very I know. high restrictions on how many people they could have at shows. That's true. So, no, 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 that's definitely I true. I know some people like canceled their subscriptions because of evil, but oh, that's like, well, people cancel their subscriptions for anything. Uh, yeah, and which get is it again, so. right? I, I, I'm not saying evil's bad. I liked the like the the I like pushing evil to the moon. It's a shame that it happened. You know, he was the. Yeah, you know, it's the same thing that happened in WWE with Drew McIntyre. It's very similar in that they couldn't, you know, you push these guys, but you're like literally pushing them into like this black hole of nothingness because there's nobody yeah. there. Uh, I, but I think like with with Evil or Sonata, I don't think they would like put the title on them. But I think they could have them like challenge, sure. and people would be into it. Like at least people in Japan would be into it. Even if like international fans are not as into it, it's kind of weird because also like, well, for other Lij people, it's weird because Shingo is like their world title guy for a little while, and then it's like, how do they navigate that? They don't have like a big uh, wait. They do have. They, I mean, and they have. They could put like. There, there's people. Who they probably won't have win the title, but they could have them do challenges. Like they you could know, have yeah, Zack Sabre could... Jr. do stuff. Sure, they, he can put easy. something together, but they don't have like extra leeway. They're right. they are like. Well, they don't have. Won't. They don't have any outside of Shingo. I feel like they don't have anyone new to push. That's really the issue. Is because they yeah they can't get the talent, and then you know they pushed Osprey. He got hurt. Yeah, he was uh, COVID. Good. It's just a real. It's a. It's a real shame with New Japan. I hope they can turn it around. I hope G One can go on and be great. Yeah. As it always, as it you know it usually is. So. Yeah, the weird other weird thing is because like the whole junior heavyweight scene is like completely stalled 
right now, not to keep being depressed, but because Hiromu was injured, and then right. it's we don't know who all has COVID, but like all the junior champion and tag champions haven't been on the shows back, so it's like like Hiromu they could they could have done some kind of like interaction between the rosters, but it's like those those people are like all out too currently. So anyway, I mean, that was just the yeah. thing. That I mean, was you on the think, same note, but worse. There's I mean, you more. would think if Hiromu was back or if he wasn't injured, they would be pushing him in probably, I mean, getting ready to push him into the heavyweight division. I mean, that's got to be the end game with Hiromu. He's too good and too charismatic. And plus the heavyweight style is, I mean, while it, New Japan, it is a hard style. It's much less damaging to the body than the junior heavyweight style i think in my opinion just you know you're doing less dives you're doing less dropping on your head although with hiromu i mean he's got a he's like dynamite kid or something where he's just gonna explode one day uh maybe not hopefully not the dynamite kid way i don't want him to do any of that stuff but i just mean like his body is going to crumble hopefully not but you know yeah. yeah, I mean, who who comes in for the Super Juniors tournament, you know, the, which in the past years had re- relied heavily on, you know, uh, lots of guests. Is, is that still happening? Because it usually happens around this time of year, right? Yeah, they like really kind of didn't even explain why they weren't doing it. But I think it's just because they just did the last one in like November because it was mm-hmm. really postponed. So I think it's like you're supposed to kind of assume it's going to happen later in the year but it was really weird because that one I mean it was really small because of travel restrictions because the junior heavyweight division since forever has included a lot of outsiders from like I'm saying like general outsiders because people from other countries and also other companies in Japan which is like it has been less common over the past like five years but so it's really weird so i think they are just putting that off um until the end of the year because they just did it and there's like nothing they could do and they like scheduled this whole other tour that got canceled all the baseball stadium one like that whole thing yeah Yeah. god yeah well let's talk about the forbidden door oh sorry yeah oh no i mean I, I was just gonna say that yeah, the baseball stadium is is worth noting. Uh, it is a weird miscalculation on their part to begin with. Um, I get it though, because it's like, oh, we can have a big stadium, we can get as many people in there as it's outside, but yeah, they don't have the infrastructure to do the vaccines over there as quickly as we can as we've been able to do it here. So they're surging. I know Osaka's bad. I've seen other places are bad too. So. Good luck to everybody in Japan. I hope it, I, you know, I miss new Japan yeah. every month. That was my, you know, I stay up all night anyway, it seems. So being able to stay up and watch a new Japan show is always a blast, <clears throat> but, but yeah, I, w- I was saying the forbidden door uh, is now open. We've got, uh, we just had Yuji Nagata in a high profile match on AEW dynamite. Rocky Romero, just a uh, reunited Rapungi uh, vice. Uh, on AEW, uh, Impact is now having Satoshi Kojima come in. Sadly, put, taking a pause on Bread Club. Uh, his bread tweets are now uh, on halt. TNA ruins everything. <laughs> uh, Finn Juice was there. Uh, El Fantasmo, I think, is also there. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Who who are you excited to see? Any like dream matches? It's it seems to have this weird trickling effect uh, instead of you know like some you know huge names jumping over, but you know that might lead to some big matches. So, anything you're excited to see? You know, maybe when things get a little safer. Yeah, there's well, they're doing Kojima versus uh, Joe Doring. They just announced that like during like right before this show started i think so that's pretty much like the most exciting match that they can do that's cool i I like joe doring yeah i'm super into that that's pretty much i'm like yeah okay that's good oh i guess also (laughs) like really (laughs) 
Willie Mac, I like him. <laughs> I want to see, see um, Willie Mac wrestle Shingo because Willie Mac went to Dragon Gate like four years ago and they like took a picture together and were like, oh, we should wrestle. And then they never did it because he never came back. So I hope that that can happen. <laughs> I would like to see that. I wonder if there's any chance once we open the f- forbidden door if we can change the name Fin Juice. <laughs> that's just, <laughs> that's just one that kind of just. Who's I don't like any. I know of no offense to the to the to those guys, but I don't like either, I don't like anybody's Fin Juice. I don't. Yeah, it's yeah just, I feel. I think they just came up with that name when they did, weren't even a real tag team and they were just tagging a lot and they were like, yeah, it's our like portmanteau name. Do you now think that you tag think champions with it in two different companies? So I, I feel like it was Juice's idea. I feel like he was yeah. really into it. <laughs> uh, but well, they're good. I mean, about, yeah. Yeah. Going. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, some classics. Uh, you know, last time, Darren, you, you showed off a clip of Jumbo Saruta, uh, who, you know, wasn't the most colorful performer. What? Uh, then we got to see him. We got to see him do a little bit of uh, acting. He played Snow White. Singing. He also dancing. Did a little dancing. He, he played Super space. Mario. Um, you know, there's another great example of an all Japan talent who maybe wasn't, you know, a little more colorful, uh, but. Those colors are black and yellow. Uh, Toshiaki Toshiaki Kawada, uh, you 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 found these clips. Um, I didn't realize what a showman he truly was. So oh. let's take a look. I will say, where is Tauway? Ta- yeah. Should be all four of them. <laughs> yeah. The you pillars, the, they're four pillars for a reason. I will Maybe say. Maybe that's a, what, what was missing. I will say, Kawada, what a what a voice, what a showman. I love that umbrella. He's a little. Yeah, uh, if you're listening to the podcast, his outfit in the first thing was a white kind of Elvis style jumpsuit with yellow accents and then a backpack holding an umbrella behind him. Uh, and then um, the following clip had uh, Kawada, Kabashi, Masawa, all in their respective uh, sort of like a night at the Roxbury. <laughs> yeah. I would say this is 97, 98, maybe uh, all Japan. Um, maybe a little earlier. So, yeah, yeah, I think so. It's, it's hard to tell Kibashi from the still outfits has the, because they're Kabashi still has the orange, but really great. You know, I think Jumbo. I know you don't think Jumbo is that colorful, but obviously, you know, they're inspired by Jumbo here. You know, they're such good singers and dancers. Well, maybe not Masawa as much. I don't know if he's as good a singer as Tiger Mask. Tiger Mask has that beautiful tenor. But, you know, Kawada's a real, uh, 
he, he, I love how dedicated he is to it. Where you can tell Masawa is not really comfortable, and Kobashi's, you know, Kobashi's having fun, but Kawada, I want to go to karaoke with Kawada really bad. Yeah, he's, I've, you know, looking at Kawada, I've always been like, this guy's the ultimate badass. And Absolutely. seeing him there, all I all I see now is like uncles at karaoke. Uh, had had a few too many, but like uh-huh. you know, showing a different side of himself. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, any 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 thoughts, Emily? Oh, this, I mean, these are classic. Clips. Yeah, yeah, these guys are amazing. I love this stuff. Uh, I will say Masawa seems more reluctant than the other two, <laughs> which is yeah. funny because he's always having fun in those uh, happy, those like uh, Merry Christmas videos. He always yeah. does good with those. And I know he like video games a lot. So I think he's just, you know, concentrated on, on the choreography. That's true. He doesn't want to mess up. Yeah. He doesn't want to do that to his, his friends. Well, there was one show that had a ton of choreography and lots of uh, musical segments, including more Kawada singing. It was Hustle. Uh, we're going to play a game. I don't know how familiar you are with Hustle, Emily, or Darren, but uh, uh, I. it's going to be kind of like a two truths and a lie. I will name five separate things, and we will figure out which of these actually happened. We're not going to jump to the clip just yet. Uh, uh, I will name these things. One of them... Did not happen. Okay, so all right. So we so we have out. five. So we have five possibilities, and only yes, w- and one of them is a lie. So it's four truths and one lie. Yes, Emily, are you a, a hustle expert by any chance? Are you gonna no, smoke this gonna competition? No, I'm gonna expose how little I know about hustle. That that is that is fair. We're we're all learning <laughs> here. I would um, say one of the first times I ever hung out with Brett. I he sat he talked to me for hours about hustle. He <laughs> Brett is legitimately a world renowned <laughs> expert on hustle. <laughs> he knows all the wrestlers, all the storylines, the intricacies. It's pretty. Yeah. Uh, it, it for in some ways it's sad, but in other ways it's inspiring. So I'm happy you get to uh, put it to good use, Brett. Okay, uh, the first of these examples will be um, a, uh, a two-on-one assault uh, with Aja Kong and Awesome Kong beating up on Genichiro Tenru. Uh, but then uh, when he attempts to strike back, they uh, tempt him with a flower. Okay. <laughs> well, I think, now were they Aja Kong and Awesome Kong or were they Erica and Margaret? I I okay. will I won't say which is which. Um, uh, okay, that's... the next is an All Japan Triple Crown Championship match where Carlito disrespects uh, the gold belts by spitting his apple onto them, pissing off Toshiaki Kawada. Oh no! Okay. Um, next up, uh, it is a match between Hard Gay. Or Razor Ramon Hard Gay uh, taking on the Beast Bob Sap and completely brutalizing him <laughs> with his dick, <laughs> just absolutely taking him to town. Uh, uh, yeah, just totally yeah. Uh, humbling the Beast with uh-huh. uh, his penis. Okay, um, great. Yeah, keep saying that. <laughs> Do you want more explanation? I will. Um, I think well, probably. Brock. Brock Lesnar, but he's a frog. And <laughs> um, finally, uh, Great Muda impregnating a woman with his poison mist and her laying an egg. Okay. So those are the examples. Do we want to guess which is the untrue one and which are the real ones? Uh, the fake ones? I think the fake one is either... The Carlito thing or the Brock Lesnar frog thing? Because mm-hmm. some of these I'm pretty... The other ones sound real. <laughs> I, I, I know the Muda egg thing is real because I remember reading about this and being like completely amazed. 
and it mm. has never left my mind since that yeah that one's true yeah in the egg do you know who was in the egg Oh, I can't remember who was in the egg. Well, we'll uh, find out. We'll find oh, out. We okay. got the clip. Fine. Okay, so I'm going to say Carlito. That's that's the fake one. Okay, okay I'll say okay. the Brock Lesnar frog thing is fake. All right. Uh, well, let's take a look at this clip. Uh, if, if we could narrate it, maybe uh, Emily and Darren, you could go back and forth narrating what's happening as you watch these clips. <laughs> All right. Oh, that looks like he's like Brock Lesnar. I yeah, hear Brock Lesnar's music. But that frog is blue. Okay. Uh oh. Here's Hard Game. He seems to be doing a assault, a groin attack. Yeah, this is Fry Takayama level. Yeah. Oh, here's uh, Erica. Otherwise known as Aja Kong. Dressed sort of like Bohemian Death. Yep. Henru is uh, getting out of the shop. Right, here comes Austin Kong. She stops Tenru. And she seems to be reaching for a flower. Tenru is moved. Oh. インディンさんが I will say this you missed in the Frog Lesnar clip uh, you you miss the part of the match. See the part of I know Frog Lesnar, and what's so funny about Frog Lesnar is he thinks he's Brock Lesnar, but he is just a frog. So when he tries oh. to do Brock Lesnar's moves, he can't do it. Like he couldn't do an F five, and if he gets attacked, he turns into a frog and just hops away. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, not quite a rest, not quite Brock Lesnar, but. It's kind of like it's just uh, like an amnesia type thing. I yeah. think. Yeah. And it's we're hard finding to... out that he has webbed hands and feet, which do- don't quite help in a wrestling match. No. And he's also, I've never seen a blue frog, but maybe they have those in Japan. I don't know. Well, uh, we'll, we'll end the episode with this. Uh, what, what's, what's one thing you're excited about in the world of Japanese wrestling? Darren, I'll start with you. Me? What I'm excited about in Japanese wrestling. Well, of course, the Forbidden Door, as that opens up. I'm interested to see what New Japan does, how they recover. Ghetto's always been a great booker. Hopefully, he can book himself out of this. Um, uh, yeah, I'm interested to see. I I, I want to see if New Japan makes a new star. That's what I'm excited for. What new star is it going to be? Jeff Cobb? Is it going to be somebody else that's under the radar that we're not thinking about? Are they going to sign someone new? I'm interested. I mean, I guess it's boring, but I'm interested in what New Japan does as it's it at its worst. The, you know, at, this is the worst it's been for New Japan in years. So. I'm optimistic they'll figure it out, but I want to see how it goes. How about you, Emily? Um, I'm excited for Cyber Fight Festival, which uh, the tag matches are actually mostly exciting on that show also. There's a Noah versus DDT Young People match. There's like a TGPW three-way tag in addition to the matches that we talked about. There's a battle royal that's probably going to be funny. I think it's going to be a good time. Um, yeah, that's the main thing I'm event I'm excited for in Japanese wrestling right now. Although probably some good stuff will happen in New Japan. But yeah, you know, yeah, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was just thinking, like, as I was thinking about New Japan, I was like, oh, maybe they'll bring Andrade in. I feel like that's kind of maybe that's the guy they should go for. That would be cool. Yeah, it would be super cool if they could bring him back. He was also yeah. very 
popular if they could yeah. just have a scene with the sombra mask maybe for a second and then that's, take it off. But that's when he says at his when he was in NXT and he'd come out with the mask yeah. and take it yeah. off. That was him at his best. And yeah. you know, uh, double or nothing's coming up this weekend, which we didn't talk about at all because yeah. well, it's fine. But you gotta wonder if he's gonna be in that match, you know? Or maybe, oh yeah, that could be. Fine. Are you in the Casino Battle Royal or the one? I feel like nobody's talking about it. But the other free agent is Brian Danielson. But it's like, would they debut him in a battle royal? I don't know. Maybe that's a different episode of Wrestling Club. But there's always things yeah. to look forward to in wrestling. So I'm excited for Japan to be COVID free, just like everywhere else in the world eventually. And then I'm looking forward to going to Tokyo Dome someday and doing that whole thing and finding Dave and <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Have you have you been, Emily? Yeah, yeah. I sat next to him at a event. I've I've been near him at press events. We do not know each other at all. But we, I have <laughs> introduced myself to him like two or three times. That's hi, nice. nice to meet but, you. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hi. Um, he smells good. Uh, he smells why. good, but like not too there, good. There, we can't talk about Dave Meltzer's smell. We're wrapping up the episode. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, I will say, though, the one thing I'm excited about that we didn't really cover on this episode is uh, Choco Pro. Uh, we, we talked about it a little bit. Yeah. But uh, next week, we'll be doing an in-depth look at Choco Pro because it's the next episode of Light Side of the Ring. That's right. We've covered uh, Rhino's Gardening Tips. We've covered Bingo Break, the Gorilla Monsoon Bingo Show. The next thing where we focus on the happier side of wrestling because Dark Side of the Ring is a little bit of a bummer Depressing. sometimes. Depressing. Uh, we'll talk about easily the happiest wrestling organization of all time uh choco pro uh part of gato move uh and we'll be talking with uh me saruga and by the young by aki uh of choco pro uh and get their uh their two cents about choco pro so look forward to that next week we'll also have uh guests the nobodies coming We'll be talking about Double or Nothing and, uh, you know, the changes that they're going through and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, so that'll be great. Emily, uh, you're a, a distinguished writer. You were just talking about this whole uh, uh, article that you wrote that lays out the New Japan situation better than we could ever do. Uh, where can people read that? Uh, my writing about wrestling these days is mostly on fanbyte.com, uh, F A N B Y T E.com slash wrestling. And I think it's going to go up tomorrow, uh, like a tour review of New Japan's comeback shows. And I have many other articles on this website as well. So mm -hmm. that's. Yeah, that's where you can find my stuff, or you can follow me on Twitter at Emily of Pratt. Or you can and do Darren, both. Not actually an or situation. Oh yeah. yes, yeah. Please do both. Take take yeah. the time right now while you're listening. <laughs> Emily of Pratt. Open up a tab. Open up another tab. Yes. Uh, and and uh, Darren, uh, uh, you've got your your radio show coming up. That's right. I'll be uh, on the airwaves in WFMU from 3 to 6 this Saturday night into Sunday. I should tell you that this will be one of my final overnight shows as my show is being moved three hours earlier to midnight Saturday night. So it'll be the uh, Saturday night midnight madness party with uh, with me. So that'll be that's something to look forward to. I'll be able to uh, go to sleep at a reasonable hour after my show as opposed to staying up until the next day. So that's exciting. So the new WFMU summer schedule comes out soon. <laughs> so there'll be a lot of new movement around there. So check that out. And then of course, if you're around this Sunday, Brett, you finally have something to plug. I finally have something to plug. I'll be taking over on WFMU for an hour. Uh, they do a show called radio row. I'm giving a, you know, you wouldn't know it from this show, but I'm also a comedian. <laughs> and yeah, uh, I'll right. be presenting uh, some sketches, some old stuff, some new stuff, uh, along with some music, some weird uh, concoctions I've made. 
Um, and then there's also going to be some cameo appearances and emphasis on the word cameo uh, from I gotta, Mark I, I McGrath. Just wanna, yeah, Mark McGrath, that's right. And Montel Jordan will be joining I wanna, me uh, I just as my say, co-host. I just want to give it a little uh, peek behind the curtain here. I got a message from Brett the other day as he was working on his Radio Row appearance. And it says, quote, does Radio Row have um, standards? <laughs> Like there's a lot of come in this, so this let's let's just leave it there. Uh, it does have standards, so <laughs> we're, we'll see if uh, by we'll standards see if this... I mean like not taste standards, uh, but actual legal standards that <laughs> could take the uh, whole network down. Let's just say Brett and I had a, a conversation about it, and uh, the last thing he said was, "Well, I guess I got to redo it." <laughs> <laughs> And but that's, see if a, I that, did. that's a really good show. Honestly, Radio Row is um, probably my favorite show on the schedule right now. Every week it's a new DJ. So I'll be excited to uh, to hear your um, your show, Brett. I'm sure it'll be tasteful and uh, humorous. Me and Mark and Montel, we got a lot of fun planned for you. So uh, look forward to that. Well, Darren, why don't you take us away? All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we'll fix that in post. You get scared? I had a, yeah, no, I had a... Sorry, I just had a thing that I that popped up. All right. All right, that'll do it for Wrestling Club. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks, Emily. Thanks to everybody for uh, tuning in. We'll be, uh, we'll be back next week with a whole new show. So tune in then, uh, you know, like, share, subscribe, give us a five-star rating on the Melcher scale, invite your friends, check out the archive, do it all. For Brett, I'm Darren. This has been Wrestling Club. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.